Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today we are continuing with our series on June 2023 Combined Science Paper 2. We are going to discuss section C which is chemistry section. Kindly subscribe to my channel to support my work. It helps you to always be up to date as I upload revisions on past exam question papers of all level maths and all level science. In section C, candidates are required to answer two questions. But as we are doing our revision, we are going to revise all the questions in section C, that is from number 10 to number 12. Number 10 is reading. In a titration experiment, Elena found out that 50 cubic centimeters of one more per decimeter sodium hydroxide solution was titrated with 25 cubic centimeters of dilute sulfuric acid. Part A, state the reagent that should be used during the reaction to make the end point visible. First, I'm going to explain what we mean when we are saying titration so that we are going to understand the whole of this question. Titration is a process of reacting two solutions by controlled addition of a solution to another using burette. An indicator is used to locate the end point. The process is done to determine concentration of unknown acids and unknown bases. So in this case, uh, we are going to use phenolphthalein indicator. When we are saying indicator, we mean a substance that changes color when the reaction is complete. This is what happens when we are using phenolphthalein indicator. It is a faint pink in neutral solutions. Uh, neutral solutions have pH of 7, and those um, solutions that have pH less than 7, they are considered as acid. When you put phenolphthalein indicator in acid solution, it changes from faint pink to colorless. Then if you, if you put the phenolphthalein indicator in base, it is going to convert color from faint pink to dark pink. That to indicate that uh, they see a base. So in part A, you just need to state the reagent that is used, and it is phenolphthalein indicator. Part B, state the products for the reaction between sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. Sodium hydroxide is a base and sulfuric acid is acid. If we react a base and an acid, we are going to obtain salt and water. I'm going to write a balanced equation that takes place when we react sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. So we are having sodium hydroxide plus sulfuric acid. This reacts to form sodium sulfate plus water. So in order to balance this, we need to have two water here and two sodium hydroxide so that we have two sodium at the left side of the equation and two sodium at the right side of the equation. We have one sulfate, one sulfate, and then we have um, two, two OH and, um, and H204. If we combine all the hydrogen, here we are having two hydrogen plus two hydrogen, they will form this four hydrogen. We are having two oxygens 
and two oxygen. This is called the balanced equation between sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. So the answers that we are going to state are sodium sulfate and water. So on our products, we are having sodium sulfate and water. In order to separate it um, from water, we have sodium sulfate. It is very soluble in water. To separate it from water, we have to evaporate water to crystallize sodium sulfate. Part G, state the pH of N1 of the products. So in a titration of sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid, we are having sodium hydroxide as a base and sulfuric acid as acid. So if we react a base and an acid, it will give a neutralized ionic salt and the product will be sodium sulfate. So salt we have equal concentration of H plus and OH minus so that the pH is going to be 7. Part E, calculate the concentration of sulfuric acid used given that one more of sulfuric acid reacts with two moles of sodium hydroxide. First, we need to calculate the number of moles of sodium hydroxide. To calculate the number of moles, we say concentration times volume. We are given our volume is 50 cubic centimeters. We need to convert 50 cubic centimeters in decimeter. We are going to divide 50 by 1000 to get our volume is 0 0.05 decimeter. And then we, call, we multiply 0 0.05 times this concentration. So we are saying the concentration is one more per decimeter times the volume. We are given that it is 50 cubic centimeters. We need to convert it to decimeter. It is going to be 0 0.05 decimeter. So our final number of moles is equal to uh, 0, 0,05 moles. So we are told that 0, 0,05 moles of sodium hydroxide they react in the titration. So according to this balanced equation, we are saying two moles of sodium hydroxide they are reacting with one more of sulfuric acid. So it means that exactly half the number of moles of sulfuric acid take part in the reaction. That is the number of moles required for the neutralization process for sulfuric acid. We are going to say 0 0,05 divided by 2. Now that we know the number of moles of sulfuric acid, we want now to calculate the volume we want now to calculate the concentration of sulfuric acid. We are given that the volume of sulfuric acid that was used was 25 cubic centimeters. So to find the concentration, we are going to say number of moles over volume. So the concentration of sulfuric acid was one mole per decimeter. This was the complete solution for number 10. In summary, we are saying the reagent that is used in titration of sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid is phenolphthalein indicator. The products that are formed are sodium sulfate and water, and the method of separating them is evaporation. The pH of any one of the products is 7, and then to calculate the concentration of sulfuric acid, we first need to find the number of moles of sodium hydroxide and then we are going to use our um, balanced equation to see the number of moles of sulfuric acid. According to the balanced equation, two moles of sodium hydroxide is reacting with one mole of sulfuric acid. So it means exactly half of the Half number of is moles of sodium hydroxide is used in the reaction of sulfuric acid. 
So we are going to say number of moles of sulfuric acid is equals to 0 0.05 divided by 2 to get 0 0.025. And then to calculate concentration of sulfuric acid, we say number of moles over volume. The number of moles is 0 0.025. And the volume which was given is 25 cubic centimeters. It needs to be converted to be in decimeter. It is going to be 0 0.025 decimeter. So if we say 0 0.025 divided by 0 0.025, we obtain our final concentration is 1 mole per decimeter. Let's move on to number 11. Number 11A, nitrogen gas and oxygen gas, which are used in industrial processes, can be obtained from atmospheric air. Describe how atmospheric air is liquefied. When enough pressure is applied, the gases are highly compressed into small volume. Particles of gas get so close together that they start attracting one another sufficiently to form a liquid. As a result, Gas takes the composition of a liquid and liquefaction occurs. Atmospheric gases can be liquefied either by decreasing temperature or by increasing pressure. Part 2. Name N1 component of air which is removed during the process. The component of air that is removed is carbon dioxide. Let me explain. A comprises of nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and argon as major components. After liquefaction, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and argon are extracted using fractional distillation. Carbon dioxide Changed into solid at a temperature of minus 97 degrees. Therefore, it is removed while least air is put under liquefaction. In B part 1, name the method used to separate components of liquid air. So fractional distillation of liquid air is usually used to separate various gases mixture in A. B part 2. State N1 use of nitrogen and N1 use of oxygen. There are so many uses of nitrogen. It is used to create ammonia that is required in the manufacture of fertilizers. It is used to manufacture nitric acid, nylon, dyes and explosives. So in this question, we are just required to list any one of these uses. We are supposed to list also the uses of oxygen. We need, our, we need oxygen in our boat because it helps to convert um, glucose into NH, which is needed um, for our boat to do work. In summary, we are saying oxygen is needed for aerobic respiration, which allows extraction of energy from ingested food. And then in industries, oxygen is used in steel making. It converts carbon to carbon dioxide that allow reduction of iron oxides into more pure iron compounds. Oxygen is used to degrade hydrocarbon compounds which are broken apart by heating them. Oxygen is also used in sewage treatment and water purification plants. In this case, we are just supposed to list in one of these uses. Finally, on number 11C, we want to describe a positive taste for oxygen gas. I have drawn a diagram to describe the taste for oxygen. So this is a test tube. Inside the test tube we have oxygen and we are going to place a glowing splint inside the test tube with oxygen. 
So test of oxygen consists of placing a glowing splint inside a test tube of gas. If gas oxygen is present, the splint will relight as oxygen supports combustion. This was complete solution for number 11. On number 11A, we're supposed to describe how atmospheric air is liquefied. So we say to liquefy the air, either we need to decrease the temperature or increase the pressure. If we increase the pressure, particles of gases get so close together that they start attracting one another sufficiently to form liquids. Gas takes the composition of a liquid and liquefaction occurs. And then on part two, we're supposed to state in one component of A which is removed during the process. It is carbon dioxide. In B1, we're supposed to name the method that is used to separate components of liquid A. We use fractional distillation. And then on B1, we're supposed to um, state the uses of nitrogen and use of oxygen one use of nitrogen and one use of oxygen so there are many uses of nitrogen but the main use of nitrogen in industrial processes is to manufacture um, fertilizers such as ammonium sulfate fertilizer and then in oxygen we know that we need uh, oxygen for respiration to take place and in industries, oxygen is used in steel making. And then finally, we're supposed to describe a positive taste for oxygen gas. So oxygen supports combustion. If oxygen is present in a test tube, a glowing splint relights when it is held inside. Let's move on to number 12. Number 12 was a question on organic chemistry. At school, my favorite topic in chemistry was organic chemistry and biochemistry. So I'm very excited to do this question. Number 12A, Fig 12.1 shows displayed structural formula of two organic molecules A and B. Name the organic molecules A and B. So A is propane and B is propene. Propane is an alkane which is the, which have three carbons and eight hydrogens. And propene is um, an alkene with three carbons and six hydrogens. Part two. Give N two differences between the two organic molecules. So I've drawn the table. The first uh, difference between propane and propene is that propane belongs to uh, alkane homologous series and propene belongs to alkenes homologous series. The second difference is on alkene, which is our propane, we are having single bonds throughout. And then on propene, we are having single bonds and double bonds here. Another difference is that we can see that on propane, we are having eight hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then on propene, we are having six hydrogens. Here we are having three, and we add this to be four, five, six. So it means that propane has eight hydrogens, while it's propene has six hydrogens. And also, alkene has a different chemical formula with alkene. The chemical formula for alkane is six C three H eight, and then the chemical formula for propene is C three H six. So you are supposed to just write 
and true of these two, of these differences. Part three: state the two products of the complete combustion of compound A other than heat and energy. So other than heat energy. So if we are talking about combustion, we are talking about reacting this hydrocarbon using oxygen. So I'm going to write a balanced equation of the reaction of propane and oxygen. So we are having our propane is CH, C, C3H8 plus oxygen. If we complete if complete combustion of hydrocarbon occurs, carbon dioxide and water, they are going to be formed. So in order to balance this balanced equation, this equation, we need to react uh, one propane plus five oxygen in order to get three carbon dioxide plus four water. We are having eight hydrogen here, and this side we are having four times two hydrogen, which is equal to eight. We are having three carbon here and three carbon here, and then the number of oxygen here we are having ten oxygen. If we say five times two, we obtain ten oxygen, and here if we say three times two, we are having six oxygen plus four oxygen to get. 10 oxygen. So this is the balanced equation of the reaction between propane and oxygen. So the two products that are formed are carbon dioxide and water. Finally on B, we are given that a hydrocarbon C contains 86% carbon and 14% hydrogen by mass. Calculate the empirical formula of C. I'll first define what we mean when we say empirical formula. It is a formula that shows the simplest whole number ratio of atoms present. So to calculate the empirical formula, we need to find the number of moles of carbon and number of moles of hydrogen. So to find the number of moles of carbon, we are going to say the percentage we are given divided by the molar mass of carbon, which is 12. And to find the number of moles of hydrogen, we are going to say given percentage, which is 14, divided by the molar mass of hydrogen, which is 1. So 86 divided by 12 is equal to 7.16667. We are going to round that figure so that it will remain as a 7. And then uh, on uh, hydrogen, we are saying 14 divided by 1. We obtain our answer is 14. We are going to divide the moles by the smallest number. The smallest number is 7. So we divide the moles by seven. We are getting one here and two here. This is representing carbon and this is representing hydrogen. So it means that we are having C1 and H2 as our empirical formula. This was the complete solution for number 12. In summary, we are saying that the, com the molecule A was propane and the molecule B was propane. And the difference between propane and propene is that propane is an alkane and propene is alkene. Propane has single bonds only, while is the alkene has single and double bonds. Propane has eight hydrogen, Y list alkene is six hydrogens. And then when he, the two products that are formed when there is complete combustion of um, compound A, which is propane, we are going to obtain carbon dioxide and water. And then the empirical formula, we managed to get it as CH2. This marks the end of our revision on the chemistry section.
Thank you so much, guys, for following me on this channel. Kindly subscribe, like, and share my videos. I love you all. This is Evelyn signing out.